Hi, it's me, the AdCrisper Fun. In today's video, I'll be talking about the biggest, the worst nightmare for an aquascaper, algae. Specifically, I'll be talking about what is an algae, how to manage that algae, and what are the common myths that surround this algae problem. Okay, so let's start. What is an algae? That itself is a very complicated topic. Algae can be a unicellular organism or a multicellular organism. Diatoms, for example, is a unicellular. Diatoms, for example, is a unicellular organism. Green algae, for example, is an example of a multicellular organism. Is algae bad for your overall aquarium health? No. No, God, please, no, no, no. No! Is it an eyesore? Yes, definitely. Yes! Yes! Algae has been around for a very, very long time. And there is a reason why algae has survived for such a long time. Algae is a very opportunistic organism. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> algae has evolved or developed to bloom or grow opportunistically. What does that mean? It means whenever you leave a gap or open a door for them, a sliver of weakness in your system, algae will start to grow. And the big reason why it is such a pain in the ass is that because it doesn't really need much in order to grow or bloom. Which leads me to the next topic. What? causes algae. If you go to different online groups, they will keep on saying it is caused by a lot of things, which can be a very confusing thing for a beginner. They usually blame it on highlighting periods. Uh, 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 don't deny it, I know you've been into Facebook groups and they always blame lighting. They are not wrong in a way, but it is not the real cause of algae. No, no, the fuck it's not. No, no, it's not. No, no. No. <laughs> the real cause of algae is the availability of ammonia or ammonium in your tank or planted aquarium. Next is inconsistent CO2 levels. And probably the number one cause of algae blooms in our tank is having unhealthy plants in our tank. So that's ammonia or ammonium, inconsistent CO2 levels, and an unhealthy plant. Okay, like what I've said in my previous video right here, and like what I've said earlier, algae is a very simple and very opportunistic organism. It needs very little quantities of stuff to survive and grow. Algae spores live off on ammonium or ammonia, and then when they develop into an adult form or a mature form of algae, they will start eating up other nutrients as well. The adult form of the algae is what we see in our tanks. What we don't see are the algae spores. So algae spores can survive with ammonium or ammonia as their nutrient source. Which is why we have algae blooms in the initial part of our aquarium keeping. Remember, when we set up our aquarium, what is the first thing we need to establish? A proper nitrogen cycle, right? Of course. Of course. In other words, a well-cycled tank. In that cycle, the first stage is controlling that ammonia. You need to build up a beneficial bacteria in your filter in order to convert that ammonia into something else. Now, with that in mind, what is the first group of algae or problem that we usually have in our newly established tank? It starts with a D. What? Double trouble! Uh-oh. That was the original. No, not that D. It's diatoms. Algae spores live off of ammonium. Diatoms, which is a very simple organism. That is why they are the first ones to grow and they are the first ones to take over that opportunity to grow. It's because you don't have a properly cycled tank. You have abundance of ammonia or ammonium in your tank. Thus, the diatom growth. And then after a while, diatoms go away. Why is that? Because your tank is slowly being cycled, ammonia is slowly being consumed by that beneficial bacteria and then converting it into nitrite and then nitrates. So diatoms are gone. 
it's a very rare case that we get diatoms after cycling our tank. What comes next? The mature forms or multicellular algae. I'll be skipping the reason number two, which is CO2, and then I'll go straight ahead to my reason number three, which is which is an unhealthy plant. A very stressed out plant is a prime trigger for an algae bloom. Yes, plants can get stressed, especially when they get transferred from one aquarium with a different water parameter into yours. And because of the sudden change, it has to adapt. During that adaption phase, that plant will start to excrete... <laughs> What's this? That plant will start to excrete a lot of older waste protein and other DNA materials. And guess what? Ammonia is a byproduct of protein digestion. The prophecy is true. And what eats and feeds off these waste? Algae. That's why in an unhealthy plant, there will always be some sort of algae growing on its leaves. That is where CO2 comes in. Plants need CO2 in order to survive and grow. Plants are carbon-based organisms. In order to grow, they need carbon. Where do they get that carbon? They get that carbon in carbon dioxide. So it's either you don't have enough CO2 or you have fluctuating levels of CO2 in your tank. If your plant is healthy, they're not dying. If they're not dying, they're not dead. <laughs> if they're not dead, they will not release ammonia into the water column. And without ammonia, you won't have any algae or big algae problems. Let's have a rundown on what causes algae. Ammonia, unhealthy plants, and fluctuating levels of CO2. Now let's get into the juicy bits. Algae treatment and cure. Now we are going to specifically talk about different types of algae and how to solve that problem. The first type of algae that we will talk about are diatoms. We usually encounter diatoms in a newly established tank. And like I've said earlier, this is due to a lack of sufficiently established media or filter to convert ammonia into nitrite or nitrates. Also, in a newly planted tank, your plants will have to adjust. They are stressed out. Some of them will melt. And with that comes ammonia and then comes diatoms. Green water algae is a free floating algae that exists in your water column. This can be due to either overfeeding or you don't have enough plants or your plants are not healthy. You overfeed your fish and then that excess food will then decay. Anything that decays gives off the ammonia thus the green water. How do you solve this? Do large water changes that will not hurt or put your fishes into trouble. You have to increase your filtration and one of the best way and highly recommended is having UV sterilization. UV sterilizers are the best way in order to stave off or control that green water problem. Next is the filamentous hair algae. Filamentous hair algae is one of the most primal form of algae and it is caused by, of course, ammonia. So in order to cure this or treat your slimy filamentous algae in your tank, you have to manually remove it by using brush, your fingers, a fork, whatever, or by removing it using natural causes like fish, snails, shrimps, and other algae eaters. And the next is having a proper filtration and enough water flow in your tank. And then just to be on the safe side, you can use CO2 and nutrients to help your plants grow and not die and produce ammonia. Green spot algae. Green spot algae is caused primarily by two things, lack of CO2 and insufficient phosphates. If you don't have enough phosphates, what do you do? You, <laughs> you add phosphates. <laughs> Adding phosphates to your tank to a healthy level of three to five ppm will be enough to control the green spot algae and having proper CO2. Now, the biggest problem with the green spot algae is that they can be kind of hard to remove or it can take a very long time for them to go away. This will not happen within hours. This will not happen within days. This can happen in weeks. So you need to have patience as well. 
The next type of algae that we will talk about is probably one of the most notorious algae. It is the black beard algae and the staghorn algae. Now, they are notoriously persistent in attack because even if you manually remove it, they will still grow. They will still come back and hunt your fucking aquarium. Why is that? If you only manually remove that black beard or stag horn algae, the root systems are still deeply embedded. Most people will suggest using hydrogen peroxide and Excel or liquid CO2 and then just blast that algae and still that black beard algae will come back. It's because the root system isn't addressed. How do you address that root system? You increase your CO2 levels. This type of algae is easily fixed by increasing your CO2 levels. Not only do you have to increase your CO2, you have to have you have to have a very consistent source of CO2. DIY CO2 systems can be a problem because they are known to be inconsistent, so a pressurized system is highly suggested. Next is the green hair algae. So, unlike the black beard algae or staghorn algae wherein you, you can easily identify what caused the problem, green hair algae is a hodgepodge of a lot of problems. Green hair algae is the culmination of everything that's wrong in your tank. You can either have a dead fish, high ammonia levels, plants are suffering, not enough CO2, not enough nutrients, too much light, thus the green hair problem, the green hair algae problem. The best way to keep up with this green hair problem is by manually removing it, try to remove as much as possible, upgrade or clean your filters, and increase your CO2 or nutrient levels. Also, don't skip on water changes. Always keep up with your water changing routine. Don't overdo it by changing the water every day or every three days. Hello, how are you? I am under the water. Please help me. You're too much raining. <laughs> Usually once a week is the best. Now eventually this algae will go away. Okay, looks like I've taken too much of your time. I'll be discussing the algae myths in the next video after this one. So I hope everything that I've discussed will help you in maintaining or having a pristine aquascape at your home or your offices. And if you want to know more about fish keeping, aquascaping, and some general tips and guides on how to be a better aquarist, I suggest you to subscribe and leave this video with a thumbs up. Again, that's it for me. I'm the Aquarist for Fun. Bye.